talking about, right, Makoto? Oh. The item he took off of Taka's lifeless body? Well, I accidentally pressed X doing that. And what's going on, everybody? Remy here from the Rodeo Plays, and welcome back to some more Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc. The last time we left off the class trial for Hifumi Yamada and Kyo Taka Ishimaru had begun. We out here trying to figure out what's going on. A lot of revelations were made. But now, we're here trying to find out what this huge piece of evidence that Kyoko had, that Kyoko has to prove that Hifumi wasn't just a victim in a murder, but also was an accomplice to help the blacken, apparently. So, yeah, um, if you want to, if you want any more information than that, you're not getting it, uh, go watch the previous episode. Anyways, yeah, uh, let's answer Kyoko's question. The thing that Hifumi stole off, stole from Taka, could it be, yeah, I kind of, I kind of remember this. It is, the note Hifumi had. I got it! You're talking about the note Hifumi had hidden away, aren't you? A uh, hidden note? That's right. We found it stuffed in his pants. What? In his... We said in his pants. Okay, okay, okay. Being more precise, in his pocket. I could kind of see how that would throw some people off. We it was in his pants? pocket. Ain't nobody go dig for mm. anything else. Yes, his pants. Okay, well, forget about the pants for now. Take a look at what the note says. Also, I didn't reach down there. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> We're gonna make we gonna we gonna make that hundred percent clear. <laughs> I found a hole. Maybe we can use it to escape. Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the equipment room at six a.m. Ah, that's the note I was telling you about. The one that told me where to go. Huh? Wait, this one's a little different. In my note, it said Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the rec room at one a.m. I see. Then this note isn't the same one Hero got. It's not the same? In other words, the killer got in touch with another person besides Hero, and that person could only have been... Taka. I got it! That's right! Taka! The killer used this note to draw out Taka and murder him. Hello! Over here! Objection! Objection! I don't really understand what's going on, but Hifumi had that letter, right? So whoever wrote it wasn't drawing out TikTok, they were drawing out Huffy! Um, <laughs> just to be clear, TikTok is Taka and Huffy is Hifumi, right? I love how she, I love how at, at a certain point you just realize she don't really know nobody's name, so she just describes you on the best way she, she knows how. Oh, yes! Why must you ruin it every time? Hey yo, hey yo, uh, Hina, you might want to shut up before she try to cut your boobs off. Man, Genocide like Jack is seriously scary, but still, I can't let her get to me. Make your argument. Bro, reverse watch you fill these glasses, glasses clean cloth. Oh shit. Here we go, boys. I'll find out after one round of going through this. Puffy had the note, right? Mm-hmm. Then the person it was intended for must have been Huffy! <laughs> but okay. remember what the note said. What time did it say to meet? 6 a.m., I believe. Okay, say less. I know what I gotta do. The time doesn't matter. The fuck it don't. The note has nothing to do with TikTok. The hell it don't. No, that's wrong. You wanna explain why his watches broke a little after 6 then? No. There absolutely is a connection. What? What the hell are you talking about? The note said to meet at 6 a.m which is the same time Taka was murdered. We've already proven that using his wristwatch. But there's more. Look where the note says to meet. The equipment room, right? Which is where Taka was killed. I see. So, Taka was murdered at both the time and place written in the note. I think that should be plenty to show that this note was definitely meant for Taka. Hmm, well, when you put it like that. No further objections. <laughs> Then someone used that note to trick Taka. Just the same as me. <sighs> the culprit really is a cold-blooded monster. Telling people they found a way out. But if they gave the note to Taka, what was Hifumi doing with it? Stuffed down his pants, no less. Here she go. Most likely. Hifumi stole it off Taka's corpse after he died. Huh? He stole it? Where's your proof? Go ahead, show us. 
Who thinks you feel me stole the note from Taka? Okay, this one I know. It's uh, if I can find it. I'm gonna say the scrap I piece got of paper. It. Yep, there it is. When I searched Taka's body, I saw that his lifeless hand was gripping a small scrap of paper. If I'm right about this, the sheet of paper this piece came from is... I knew it! It fits perfectly with the note we found hidden on Hifumi! Then Taka's scrap and Hifumi's note... Yup. They're from the same piece of paper. Hifumi had the note meant for Taka, while Taka's corpse still grasped a small piece of that note. There's only one way to explain it. Taka died clutching the note. Hifumi tried to free the note from his death grip, leaving behind only one small scrap. Did I get all that right? That means Hifumi knew the note was important. Exactly. Which proves that he was an accomplice in the murder. Whoa. Yeah. After seeing all this, Hifumi was super involved in this whole thing for sure. In fact, he was behind the whole thing. In fact, he's still alive! You know, I still don't mind the idea of mounting and gagging this dumbass motherfucker. Like, why do we keep inviting him to these trials? This nigga is stupid. Sorry, no. I ain't apologize for shit. I'm a kick him. When we found him in the repository, Hifumi was truly and completely dead. The second body discovery announcement proves that. So then, who killed Hifumi? Whoever did is the mastermind. The true killer. Hey, no loose ends. He was killed in the repository. So he must have been killed not long after transporting Taka's body. So he must have been killed after Taka's body vanished, but before we found both bodies in the repository. During that time, we'd all split up and were searching for Taka's missing body. In other words, during that time, none of us have alibis. Wait, but me and Sakura were together. Stop trying to steal the spotlight, you stupid walrus! Who are you calling a walrus? Anyway, when they were killed bothers me, too. But there's something that's been bothering me even more. And what might that be? The weapon they used to kill Hifumi! The weapon? Yeah. Because, I mean, according to the Monokuma file, the way Taka and Hifumi were killed was almost the same, with them having similar fractures and all. Come on now, that note did not go that far in depth. But Justice Hammer 3 and 4 were still laying around in the nurse's office and equipment room, right? So if Hifumi was killed in the repository, the culprit would have had to grab one of the hammers, kill Hifumi, then put the hammer back where they found it. But wouldn't that be seriously risky for him? I'm surprised. It seems there's some semblance of a brain knocking around that skull of yours after all. I know, right? I can, yo, you gotta, we gotta, we gotta give it up, Cla class, class for hero, man, because there is not a lot of times where I see someone say something fucking stupid, and then come back with something like, with something of that level of intelligence, that's interesting, you don't see that often with stupid people, stupid people will say something stupid, and then debate with you about the fact of why the stupid thing they said is right. Hell yeah, it's packed in there good and tight. He's right though. I don't understand it either. The Monokuma file makes it clear that they were killed using similar instruments. But if the hammers were already laying around those other rooms... So the question is, how could the culprit have gotten their hands on either of the hammers? Personally, I haven't a clue. So which hammer was used to attack Celeste? Number one or number two? Those were accounted for in other rooms, too. And I don't think either one is big enough to kill someone. Man, hammers don't have to be... Yo, hammers don't have to be big enough to kill somebody. You just need to swing them hard enough to do damage. Um... Then... Don't ask um, how I know that, okay? Just know, uh, you swing a, you swing a regular-sized hammer hard enough, killing somebody ain't that hard to is do. Is it not possible they used a different weapon? I don't think it is possible. They were both killed with the same kind of thing, right? So then, what was used to kill Hifumi? The weapon that was actually used to kill Hifumi. The whole picture surrounding this case won't become clear until we figure that out. Somehow, I've got to find the truth. All right, boys. Make your argument. Let's 
spotless hammer, of course. All right, boys. What, what we got? was used to kill Hifumi? Was it Justice Hammer Three? Maybe Justice Hammer Four? Well, whatever it was, there's one thing we have to figure out. Mm -hmm. How was the culprit able to move around so freely with the weapon? How did nobody witness them carrying it? Uh huh. Sounds like a Justice Hammer Five is about to make its appearance. Oh uh, no! Check out MurderGear.com/slash/HammerTime for more info. Damn. Well, one thing seems pretty clear: the murder weapon had to be one of the Justice Hammers. No, negative. No, that's wrong. I'm so grateful I stopped myself too, because I was really looking at what Celeste was talking about, and I'm like, clearly it was the it. murder weapon wasn't a Justice Hammer at all. No. It was something completely different. But seriously? A different weapon? Specifically, a hammer from the repository. The killer could have easily used that to kill Hifumi. Now, all the hammers in the repository were covered in flecks of grit and debris. But for some reason, one of them had been scrubbed clean. Huh? Mm -hmm. And the reason it had been scrubbed clean was most likely because it was used to commit murder. If the hammer got covered in Hifumi's blood, of course they'd have to clean it off. Right. I'd also like to point out that the repository has all kinds of hammers. Big ones, small ones. Medium range ones. And even some flat mallet-like ones. I think whoever made the Justice Hammers used those as a basis for their design. If that's true, that would explain the Monokuma Files note about the wounds being similar. So Hifumi moved Taka's body to the repository, where mm -hmm. someone then used a hammer to kill him. And Makes whoever sense. did that is the true killer. The one Hifumi was working with. And the one who betrayed him. Hold on a moment. I still think it's strange to assume someone was working together with him. Why is that? Why is that, little lady? The way lady? the graduation rule works, there is no benefit to helping someone else carry out a murder. So the idea that anyone would work together like that is simply ludicrous. We talked about this, did we not? We did talk about how we did talk about how there would be how there wouldn't be any reason for anyone to work together. At least that's what we thought at first, but make your argument. Spotless hammer. That's clearly not gonna be it. Based on the rules that have been laid out for us. Mm -hmm. Even if more than one person is complicit in the murder, mm -hmm. only the one who actually carried out the act can graduate and survive. Mm -hmm. Assuming the rule holds true, it is simply impossible that two people work together on this. That is how the rule was explained to us. But that only really applies if there's one murder, right? In this case, however, there were two murders. She right. Can we really say there was no chance two people work together on this? Based on the rules that have been laid out, even if more than one, only the one who actually care, assuming the rule holds true, it is simply impossible. No, that's wrong. Funny enough, this is literally what I was talking about in the in the two episodes ago. When Since we did there the were two murders, it's at least plausible that more than one person was involved. This is legit what I was talking about two episodes ago. I made an entire joke about this. Hey. TRD editing this episode. Input the clip of you talking about this. Not the full clip, but just enough of it to get your point across. King of which, I'd like to ask the bear. If there is an accomplice, do they also become blackened? So you ask, and so I shall answer. Each murder is allowed to have an accomplice, but only the one who does the killing will get to graduate. So it's easy for two people to graduate then. If I kill one person and I tell my accomplice, okay, now you need to go kill this other person, they killed the other person. That's two murders right there from one plan. We can't kill no more. So if you catch one of us, you didn't catch both of us because we both did it. We leave. <laughs> you, we talked about this two episodes ago when I made that point across. What do you mean? If there'd only been one murder, then yes, the idea of an accomplice isn't really worth considering. Naturally, if only one person can be saved per murder, an accomplice has no risk versus reward benefit. 
risk versus reward benefit? The payoff for working together. The reward that balances out the risk of taking part in the scheme. There's no point in being someone's accomplice if there's no benefit to you. However, if there were some potential mutual reward for the risk, then cooperation becomes possible. You're saying that two people could act as each other's accomplices to commit two separate murders. I think that's what the true killer told Hifumi. They would each have an accomplice for their crime, and based on the case's events, Hifumi would have been the first one to act, murdering Taka. They made him carry out the first murder so he couldn't back out of helping them later on. So in this case, there wasn't one single person committing multiple murders. Instead, each person killed someone, creating two separate incidents. And it only looked like one person because that's how the true killer designed it to look. A single suspicious individual, a similar weapon used in each crime, disappearing bodies. By creating one seamless set of circumstances, they made it look like one person was behind it all. The mastermind picked their target and managed to convince him to go along with their plan. And then to avoid the no accomplices rule, they simply killed their accomplice. Which, if true, means that betraying Hifumi was part of the plan from the very beginning. Th that's just awful. How could anyone be so cruel? Yet so smart. You think so? I can't help but admire its cunning. Yeah. Still, their choice of accomplice seems odd. That's what I'm saying. It's like, it's like, yeah, it's cool, but you gotta, you gotta admire the smart to it. It's like, um, it's like looking at, uh, Ted Bundy. Like, yeah, it's fucked up. He killed people, but you gotta admit, this motherfucker had smarts when it, when it was needed. <laughs> like, if you don't believe me, uh, quick tangent. Um, there is a time where Ted Bundy was arrested, right? If you don't know who Ted Bunny is, look him up. But here's the thing. There was a time that Ted Bunny was arrested. What ended up happening was he ended up going to trial, represented himself as his own juror, called a recess to overlook his own case, and used that recess to escape the courthouse and continue and go on the run. Yeah. The, yeah, it's it's crazy that he killed people, but he had smarts where it mattered. Same thing here. It's like, man, it's kind of fucked up you killed Hifumi. But also, I admire the smarts, the smarts and cunning you had in order to plan this out into this much detail. You gotta respect, I gotta respect it where it counts. <laughs> Get from me to convince us the two murders were the same, and the main characteristic, the, that was the main characteristic this time. Kyoko must have noticed that fact from the very beginning. Which is why he said not to look at this series of, of connected, not to look at this as a series of connected events, but entirely separate incidents. Kyoko really is amazing. Although, when you think about it, she's almost too amazing. Like, it's almost unnatural how good I she is. I understand how an accomplice could be involved. But then, who was the one pulling Hifumi's strings? That's problem numero uno right now! The true killer manipulated Hifumi to carry out a number of actions and in the end murdered him. In the debates up till now, the way the case has unfolded, when you consider all of that, there's only one real person who seems to fit. Key! I wonder who it could possibly be! It couldn't have possibly been the person who went out of their way debating against every single freaking element that we have brought into the case! It couldn't possibly be that! It couldn't possibly be the person who we've only seen Hufumi work with one time because they told him to. Isn't that right, Celeste? I mean, that would just be nonsense, Here's my answer. right? It was Celeste. I'm just saying, I find it extremely hard to believe that the one person who's been debating, like, I don't mind if you keep debating, but when you're heavily debating and heavily pushing away evidence that's being presented at every turn, I'm sorry, you put a target on your back more than you do uh, make yourself seem like you're trying to be part of the debate. Ah, uh, so I'm the suspicious individual now, am Bitch. I? Bitch, you've been suspicious since the first time I met you. Now I just got a reason to point a finger. <laughs> I really do hate this kind of joke. Do I look like the clown prince of crime to you? This ain't a, a joke. joke. I wonder. So what you are saying, then, is that I specifically chose to work together with Hifumi. 
Yes. The idea that I would choose to spend any amount of time interacting with him. But you did, though. You told him to make you tea at one point. That I would go within 10 feet of that shit from brains, that lazy, worthless, goddamn idiot! Uh, uh, ah, uh, pardonnez-moi. Just to be clear, there is evidence to support it. Is that so? It is. Throughout the investigation, there was certain behavior that was common only to the two of you. Considering what we've learned so far, it only further proves that the two of you were working together. What is the only thing you feel me and Celeste had in common? Uh, encountering the suspicious it. individuals, yeah. The behavior they had in common has to do with the suspicious individual in the suit, doesn't it? Six inch dick, I'm gonna dog. <laughs> Why was that my first rebuttal? It's like, it's like, why is that my first rebuttal to this? It's like, shut up, I got a six inch dick. I'm an adult. <laughs> I got no clue why. It just, it's like the first thing to pop in my head. But I should have probably said like, shut up, I'm the one figuring this out. But nope, it's like, I got a six inch dick. I'm an adult. I'm in this conversation. Sorry. Nigga, did you just apologize? As he said, only Celeste and Hifumi ever laid eyes on the oh, costumed shit. individual. Uh -huh. If we accept that Hifumi was one of the culprits, we can't help but suspect what Celeste has said as well. Are you saying everything they told us was a lie? I mean, are you really surprised? After taking Hifumi to the nurse's office, we all began our search for this individual, correct? And not too long after that, do you remember what Celeste said? All right. We headed to the second floor specifically because of what she claimed to have seen. Next, to draw us all to the physics lab up on the third floor, she let out a blood-curdling scream. And when we'd all come to see what was wrong, what was it she said? Mm -hmm. Once she'd done her job of getting us all up to the physics lab, it was time for her partner to get to work. Also, the one big loophole in this was the idea that, um, keep in mind, the, supposedly the guy was going to the physics lab, so when Hifumi screamed, what was the purpose of that? If the guy you were talking about was specifically on that floor. Yeah. It was to get us to divide into two groups so that we would discover both bodies at the same time? In fact, Celeste was precisely the one who proposed that we split up. Well, if Celeste and Hifumi were working together, all those chance events suddenly become connected. And on top of that, that piercing cry of yours early on. Ha -ah! uh, that was to signal Hifumi, wasn't it? Yeah, you kind of hear that. You go, what the fuck? It was your way of telling him, we are on the third floor. Everything's going according to plan. Why else would you let out a scream that could have carried across the sea? I just realized another strange thing. When we found Hifumi in the nurse's office, who we now know was only pretending to be dead. I certainly wasn't expecting this. Oh, okay. Celeste, you were the first one to say he'd been murdered. You wanted to make sure we wouldn't have any doubt in our minds. I... I don't believe it. Everything. The whole thing was one big act. Believe it. If I want to leave this damn school, you better be ready. <laughs> Let me tell you something. If you want to leave Hope Speak Academy as the Blacken, you better, you better be ready to put on a fucking show. One, a uh, show, fuck a show, a uh, show stopper. Okay? You don't leave out of here with basic murders that a three-year-old could put together. You leave out of here by putting together a murder so great, so in-depth, that not only does it take time and planning and coordination and the fact and the idea that your murder needs to be so on point in coordination that one slip up could break the whole thing. Yeah, if your murder don't don't hit that type of line of that type of level of extreme. You, you wasn't trying to get out of here. You was trying to get caught. Hina, you were with Celeste when Hifumi's body disappeared, right? Yeah. 
I was feeling kind of sick, so Celeste took me to the bathroom. Oh, yeah, that's her right there. I didn't, she didn't, if she had said I went to the bathroom and Celeste had followed, that's a whole different thing. She said Celeste took me to the bathroom. Wait, then that was... She wasn't worried about you. She just saw a chance to help Hifumi sneak out of the nurse's office. Each piece isn't much by itself, but start putting them together and the picture gets very ugly indeed. Wouldn't you agree, Celeste? I have no idea what you mean. Oh, so you want to play retarded now. That's good. Don't bother trying to deny it. You made one fatal mistake. Oh, did I? I didn't even catch it myself when you first said it. But looking back, I can say that that one little slip up was your undoing. What are you talking about? Oh, now you want to play... No, play I'm talking me. about what you said after Hifumi's body disappeared and we returned to the nurse's office. You must really be enjoying this. Enjoying the sight of us standing around, frightened and confused. We're all gonna die here. We're gonna die just like those guys. Die. Oh, wow, I did not catch that. That, you could easily miss that. When you hear that, not gonna lie, I think when I first heard that, my first thought was, damn, we might die like Sayaka and everybody else. But when you say those guys, yeah, that kind of throws it out there, doesn't it? I remember her saying that too, but I don't understand what's so strange about it. Then pay attention. Sakura, Toko, and I were first to discover Taka's body in the equipment room. Then Makoto showed up and told us Hifumi had been killed. So Sakura and I left with Makoto. Once we were in the hall, we ran into Celeste, and the four of us headed to the nurse's office. Right, and they never said anything about the fact they found T Taka's body, which is weird to, to the fact that she would even say, we're gonna be dead just like those guys. On its own, it means nothing. You would think everybody else who's died before us, but when you take it to account this murder and how everything was set up, it's like, wait a minute, those guys? So far, we only know one person died. Who's the others? Like, who's the other or others? Like, what you know that we don't? Now, the entire time we were together, none of us said anything about Taka being dead. I like, this is why I like Dead and Rob, but when you, when you start figuring it out and everything starts coming together, you sit there like, you sit there with the, Oh shit face. Like you just said, little, oh wait a minute. Hang on. Everything everything stopped coming together. You look at the bigger picture like there the smallest thing you missed that could have threw away the whole clue. That could have threw away the whole child. You just see they be like, oh I had paid more attention to that. That would have mm. Think about it. Celeste's comment doesn't make sense. It was completely out of place. Yeah, I see what you're talking about. Although I don't really get what it means. Saki. You hear that, Celeste? Everyone's having some trouble understanding. Could you repeat what you said? If you're really not the culprit, you shouldn't have any problem repeating it, right? Saki said that Celeste's comment doesn't make sense. But what is he alluding to? He just said it! He just said it! It's weird to think the fact that she said that. Nobody knew they all died. Nobody knew that two people died. To everybody else's surprise, except for Makoto. All I and said others. was, mm. they must really be enjoying this. Mm -hmm. Enjoying the sight of us standing around, frightened and confused. Mm -hmm. They must be positively elated. Mm -hmm. We are all going to die here. Mm -hmm. We are going to die, just like those guys died. Uh huh. And that is all I said. And that's all it takes to finish this. It's obvious, isn't it? What was so strange about Celeste's comment? Got you. When she said that, she should have only have known about Hifumi's death. With that in mind, what's so strange about what she said is... All I said was... They must really be enjoying the sight of us standing around. They must be positive. We are all going to die here. We are going to die. Just like those guys... Yeah, no, that's really strange. Wrong. How do you know? Uh, how do you know there are others if if you only should have known that Hufumi had died? That's right. There's no reason Celeste should have said, just like those guys died. You, cause you couldn't. This is an example of overacting. 
There's underacting, which will get you caught up real fast. But when you overact, you need, for situations like this, being precise with your words will, will can make the difference. If you had not said those guys, if you just said, we're gonna die just like Ifumi, nobody would have questioned it. But because you said, we're gonna die just like those guys, wait a minute, who the fuck is these other guys you talking about? So what you know that we don't? Why, why you know Why you know about some other bodies? This is scary right now. You need to open your mouth a little bit. When she said that, none of us had told her Taka was dead. The only people who know was who? Makoto, Bakia, Sak... Uh, Makoto, Bakia, Sakura, Toko. Those are the only four people who knew. Nobody else should have known at that time. Everybody else should have thought, oh yeah, if they didn't... The only people who knew that Hufumi and Taka was dead was Makoto. Other than that, both parties didn't know the other person the other party was looking at was dead. So, he, so Hina and the rest of the gang didn't know that Taka was dead, and Baki and the rest of his gang didn't know that Hifumi was dead. Each party seen their own corpse, which is weird when you think, why would Celeste say those guys if your party should only have known that Hifumi had died? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And we didn't run into her until after we were all out in the hall. Mm -hmm. So there was never any chance for her to have seen his body in the equipment room for herself. So how did you know, Celeste? How did you know more than one person had been killed? And how did you know they were both guys? Yeah. Because Kyoko had also disappeared, right? So she could have been dead too. <laughs> you mm. all have such vivid imaginations. You know that? Sure as fuck do, but I also know how to separate them. I also know how to separate fantasy from reality. Imaginations. You claim that I was lying when I told you about the suspicious person I saw. Then what about the picture I took? How do you explain this picture of the costumed villain dragging Hifumi away? It it has to be some kind of setup, right? So let's put the suit on, and then. Then she used the camera's timer to... to... set up the picture. I'm gonna tell you everything that's wrong with that. One, that suit don't fit her. Two, the camera was so basic it doesn't even have a timer on it. And even people were saying that it looked like it'd be... that they would be surprised if it took more than five pictures. Have you so quickly forgotten? You are the only one who could have possibly fit into that suit. Plus, I happen to know that this particular camera does not have a timer. In other words, it is an unassailable fact that this is a picture of Hifumi being dragged away. If everything I told you was a lie, how can this picture exist? Simple. Are we sure that's really a picture of the suspect dragging Hifumi away? What could you possibly mean by that? Surely there are other explanations than the one you've offered up. Like they say, a picture's worth a thousand words. I never said it was worth any sprint. A picture's worth a thousand words? But nobody says, but nobody really knows what particular words the picture is actually saying if you catch my drift. And if you don't, basically, the picture can mean anything you want it to mean just off looking at it. It's like, it's like art. You can have one person can see the art this way, another person can see the art that way. Same with pictures. You can see it this way, but you can also see it in a different way if you look at it, if you look at it in a different light. No, there is no other explanation. Other explanations? If it wasn't a picture of the suspect dragging Hifumi away, the only other possibility is, uh, uh, dancing, I've been drinking, uh, Hifumi is dragging the suspect, let's go with the I got it! I like me dancing, It's it? not a picture of the suspect dragging Hifumi away. I would say it's a picture of Hifumi dragging the suspect away. <gasps> oh! Shut the fuck up, didn't you? That's certainly within the realm of possibility. The one being dragged off in that picture isn't Hifumi, but the person in the robot suit. We've simply been led to believe that it's the other way around. And the strange costume might only exist to lead us astray even farther. If you saw someone wearing something like that in this situation, of course you'd notice and be suspicious. Th that's what happened! You put me to sleep and made me out to be the bad guy in all this! <laughs> Such a thing is utterly impossible. Why? Hifumi was dragging him away? Ridiculous. Is it? 
I don't think it's ridiculous at all. I think it's ridiculous you're still fighting at this point. Then shut your mouth and allow me to educate you. Please do. I'm, I'm all for learning some shit that I never knew before. Come on, explain. Educate me right now. Come on. Let's give me this. Let me get, come on. Give me my degree and what the fuck you trying to teach me so I can give you this degree and fight in crime 101. Celeste thinks that she can prove that there's no way Fumi was dragging the suspect away. But is that really possible? Come on. I'm gonna use this degree in how to solve how to solve cold cases. Mm -hmm. You dressed me up in that suit after I passed out. Then you just draped me across Hifumi and had him carry my weight. You tried to make me look like the bad guy. Like I said, ridiculous. As you can see in the picture, the suspect is standing perfectly upright. If the person inside the suit was unconscious, there's no way they could stand up straight like that. No, that's wrong. Don't we gotta keep bringing up this costume about the fact that you can't bend over in it? It's impossible? No. Even if the person inside the suit were unconscious, they could still stand up like that. I could have sworn we brought this up earlier. I can almost guarantee in the first part of this class trial, we brought this up that this suit don't bend. It's not licorice. This shit, this shit straight as fuck, homie. Because that Robo Justice suit had a certain characteristic. It don't bend. Totally can't bend at the waist. Seems like a pretty obvious oversight. That's right. They totally made a mistake when they made it, so it couldn't bend at the waist. I'm not so sure that was a mistake. I think the suit was designed from the beginning to be used the way it was. <sighs> Celeste and Hifumi took the suit they'd specially designed and stuffed Hiro into it. That's how they were able to fake that whole thing. The point of it all was to make us believe whoever was in the suit was to blame. <laughs> Sounded like a broken chainsaw to ain't you, bitch. Come here. Come bring that ass here so I can educate your ass real quick. Well then, I suppose this is checkmate. Facts. Checkmate? <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me laugh, you idiot! What do you mean, checkmate? C Celeste? Clearly, you want to cram me into your little guilty box. Well, there's one little problem. Have you already forgotten what Hifumi told us as he lay dying? Mm hmm. Yeah. He called her Yasuhiro. When we asked him who had attacked him, his answer was quite clear, was it not? Damn, it sounded like you forcing that accent, man. He said, and I quote, Yasuhiro. In other words, Yasuhiro Hakagure! Wait, but my name isn't really Yasuhiro. It's actually Taro. Your confusing statements don't make any sense. You're only making things more complicated. Yeah, Taro and as like the first main letters for tarot, as in the tarot cards? He did say Yasuhiro, but are we sure he was really pointing the finger at Hiro? What the hell are you talking about? I'll burn you alive! Bitch, please. Kyoko, what do you mean by that? Think back to how Hifumi used to talk to us. How did he refer to each of us? Uh, he gave us nicknames, he said, he said for serious a lot, he said he was last names. Last name. I got it! That's right! Our last names! He called us all by our last names! I almost say nicknames until I remember that's a genocide geo thing. Exactly. I know I heard him say Mr. Nayagi more than once, for example. Yeah, I remember too. So if Hifumi did mean to say Hiro's name, he would have said his last name, Hagakure. I'm sure it was just incidental. By chance, he just. his first name. Nah, see, I'm not a big fan of Hifumi, I'll admit it. But what I will say is though, the fact that he calls people by last names, it's not coincidence. He didn't call just me by my last name. He's also called Sayaka by her last name. I remember this because he, I remember this because during the first class trial, he was like, so Mr. Nayagi, 
became friends with Miss Maizono in order to kill her. Yeah, I remember that, bitch. Indecent? Don't talk. <laughs> Random chance. Now, isn't that a convenient explanation? Yeah. No. There's no reason to think he would have said the name any different than normal. But he must have run out of energy before he could say any more. So Hifumi was trying to tell us the last name of whoever killed him? But the name he said doesn't apply to anyone here. Well, no. Hold on. There's one person it could apply to, and that's Celeste. She never actually told us what her real name is. Most of that. <sighs> what did you just say? Come on, bitch. <laughs> Come on, bitch. Um, spoiler time. I have seen the end of Hope's Peak arc, which is basically season three. I guess you could call it season three. I don't know what you would really call it. But basically, it's the end of the timeline for the Danganronpa series. If you watch the Hope side of that, if you watch the Hope side of that series, which are all the even numbers, if I remember correctly, they tell a story about how the chairman of Hope's Peak Academy wanted to expand internationally and of course that never came to be they even i'm pretty sure we even seen it earlier on way earlier in the, in the videos when we first discovered the second floor so you're from what germany if i remember correctly how fucking convenient that hope speak just flew all the way to germany to come get you i doubt it personally i doubt they flew all the way to germany to come see the ultimate gambler what I do believe, though, however, is that they chose people from their home country, which, of course, would be Japan. Since they never built out internationally, I'm almost confident to say that they either didn't have the funds or didn't want to waste the time of sending people out to go scout ultimate talent. Everybody was from Japan. So uh, the name Celestia Lunenberg, as I said when we first met you, um, is only convenient if both your parents just so happen to be German and lived in Japan, which... Let's just say uh, the percentage of that happening is quite low. Also, we called you out on him when we first met you. So, uh, sorry, Celeste, but uh, that's a dumbass name for someone who was born in Japan. Unless both your parents happen to be German, which I highly, highly doubt that you have two German parents who both live in Japan. To think you'd take your false accusation so far, I don't know whether to laugh or spit. Well, if you choose to spit, make sure you choke on it. Come on! Enough with your idiotic blather. Yasuhiro is a loser's name. Do I look like a loser to you? Look, you? you look like a bitch. Scratch it. You look like a cunt. That's what you look like. Well, do I? Yes. You do look like a cunt. What? I think I've earned the right to be a little on edge. You look like a coked out fiend. Okay, then fill us in. What's your real name? Fine! Make sure your ear holes are wide open and listen up! I will! But they do tend to close automatically to bullshit. Please believe. My real name is Celestia Ludenberg. Could you please stop making me repeat myself over and over again? Yeah, see, like automatic doors, my shit just closed when that came up. Celeste won't give... Celeste won't give up. So then... I have to do something to make her accept it. Make your argument. All right. Let's get it popping, boys. If Fumi was trying to tell us something, he wanted us to know the killer's last name, Yasuhiro. If there's one person here who might have that last name, it would have to be you, Celeste. You haven't told anyone what your real name is. How many times do I have to tell you? My name is... Mm -hmm. Celestia Ludenberg, god damn it! How long do you plan to go on pretending? I'm not pretending. It's the truth. And since you have no way to contradict me... Wanna bet? That's the only truth there is! Moron! Of course I missed. This is what happens when I don't use focus. If Fumi was he wanted us to know the killer. If there's one person, it would have to be you, Celeste. How many times? I? Celeste Ludenberg! How long do you plan? I'm not pretending. And since you have no way to contradict, there's a contradiction. No, that's wrong. Whip that e hair. Mm-hmm. Whip that e hair book out. That's it. 
The handbook! What?! Any time you turn your handbook on, it shows the owner's name when it boots up, right? Uh-huh. I don't give a fuck what your name... I don't give a fuck what you tell us your name is. Monokuma knows what your name is. So you can tell us your name is Sticky Joe, but the whole time your name is Terrence. It, Monokuma knows. Monokuma told us all about it before. This handbook is all... This handbook is absolutely vital to a healthy school life. So don't lose it. When you start it up, it will display your name. Always make sure you have the right one. Now, now, this is not your everyday handbook. It has so many more uses than that. So all we have to do is check her handbook, and that'll clear up everything. That's how we can find out Celeste's real name. That, that's an invasion of privacy. I, I refuse to cooperate. Well, here's how this works. <laughs> You're fucked regardless. Hope you like it rough. Um, you can agree and uh, let us see. And if it, it and if it's not, you know, if Celeste really is your real name and that comes up, then you're free to go. But assuming from your attitude and the fact that you're denying the right to be searched, um, I'm assuming it's wrong. So if you choose to disagree with us and not go through with the search, we have all right to suspect it's you. Hence why I said, hope you like getting fucked rough. You don't get a ch you don't get a choice in this. Either you show us, either you show us it's wrong and we leave it be. But judging from your attitude, we have no point. But we have no choice but to assume that our ac that our accusation is right. But if you choose to deny us, which you are now, then we have no choice but to assume that you're that you're the one who did it. You stuck on a two way street, Celeste. Can you please just tell us what really happened, please? Just tell us. Even when I'm put in check, it's just my nature not to give up. Because, 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 because! Wow, you sound like a kid that can't get their life Until together. Until the game's over, you never know what might happen. Sound like someone who's never played Yu-Gi-Oh before. Fine then, let me settle it. Let me go over the case again, from the beginning, and shed light on all your crimes. Yeah. And that'll bring everything to an end. Closing argument. All right, boys, finish this thought. So yeah, like I said, she sounds like someone who's never played Yu-Gi-Oh before. Bitch, the heart of the cards don't exist. Either you got, either you get the draw you need or you don't. And if you don't, give up. In this case, how did the killer recruit their accomplice? All right. Mm, we'll save that for later, because I don't really know that. What time did the killer call the victim to the rec room? If I can find that. Wow, okay, there's even shit from the old case. Got it. To the rec room? Uh, there's the victim. Who was it that the killer summoned first? The killer summoned... If I can find it. I don't think this is it. No, I think it's not it if it's in the same panel. That's when it's not it. They knocked them out and they stuffed them into the robot justice suit to falsify their evidence. And they used a certain item to do it. Alright. Alright. What time was Taka supposed to head to your equipment room? I don't see that kind of number, so it's gonna be this. Alright. The justice hammer that was used to kill Taka was what number? Um, shit. Justice Hammer number four. All right. In the library, Hifumi used something to fake the existence of the shadowy criminal. What you use, homie? Uh, I want to say Justice Hammer two. Unless there's two and three. Wait, Celeste was attacked first. In the f yeah, okay, it's two. Because Hifumi was attacked was attacked first and that's how they set it up. Lucius Justice Hammer was in the nurse's office when Hifumi was pretending to be dead. Well, if Celeste had one, Hifumi got hit twice, so that would mean he had Justice Hammer three. Okay, act six. Hifumi used something to move Taka's body. That was this bad boy right here. All right. The weapon that was used to kill, the weapon that was used to murder Hifumi, what was it? 
you are over here. Boom, that big ass croquet mallet. All right, boys, now I only got one more panel to go through. All right, and uh, finally, god damn, this gotta be a faster way of moving. All right, in this case, how did the killer recruit the accomplice? Was it seduction? Uh, no, this is a name, cause that's in that. Was it snacks? Uh, no, cause that's in there. Um, it's either this or I'm going with this. The killer is you. That's probably wrong, but I couldn't. Before anything, the killer persuaded someone to help carry out the murder, and that person was. Yep, I had a feeling. I was already like, that's not going to be right. So, what did you use? Oh, I don't get no info on these. That's okay. That's a pleasure I get out of Dang Rampa too. Say less. Um, what did you use? What did you use to recruit him? That's a crystal ball. Oh, I don't think I've ever seen that. Is so I be you. Wrong. Before anything, the killer persuaded someone to help carry out the murder. And that person was... Oh. He flew me. With an accomplice. The killer was able to execute a number of otherwise impossible schemes. So that's why I screwed up because of the question. The question was asking. I think, I think I messed up. I don't think the question was asking who. I think it was asking. I don't think the question was asking how. I think it was asking who, and I think I read it wrong. First, they convinced someone to meet them in the rec room last night at one in the morning. That someone they met with was Hero. The murderous duo intended to pass Hero off as the prime suspect. So when they met up with him, they drugged him, knocked him out, and stuffed him into the Robo Justice suit. Next, Hifumi positioned himself to make it look like Robo Justice was attacking him while the killer used a digital camera to take pictures of the assault. They did all this just to create evidence that would put the suspicion on Hero. When they were done with him, they shoved him, still unconscious, into the pool room locker. And then finally, at 6 a.m., they moved into the murder phase of their plan. They called Taka to the equipment room. And that's where Hifumi killed him, making it the scene of the first murder. The murder weapon was Justice Hammer 4, which was left there in the equipment room. The reason Hammer Number 4 was used was to create confusion about the order of the crimes. So, next they falsified two more assault incidents. For these attacks, the killers pretended to be the victims to solidify Robo Justice as the suspect. The first fake incident was the attack in the rec room. There, the killers wanted us to see Justice Hammer 1 and the Robo Justice pictures they'd taken. They wanted to make sure we bought the surprise attack story. The second fake incident was the attack in the library. This time, they planted Justice Hammer 2 and an injured Hifumi to sell us that story. With these two incidents, the killers were able to create a certain preconception in our minds that the suspect was increasing the size of the hammers and attacking people in order as they did. We fell right into their trap and started looking for the suspect based on that. While we did that, we left Hifumi alone in the nurse's office. This was exactly what Hifumi was hoping for. He took a blood packet from the refrigerator and Justice Hammer 3 and turned the room into a crime scene in which he himself had apparently been brutally murdered. He let out a scream to draw us back, and when we returned, that's what we found. Meanwhile, the other group that had been out searching found Taka's body at the same time. So when we heard the body discovery announcement, we naturally assumed it was for Hifumi. 
we left the nurse's office, and Hifumi once again simply got up and made his escape. When we learned his body had disappeared, we all rushed back to the nurse's office, and once again, Hifumi had the chance he was waiting for. This time, he snuck into the equipment room. He wrapped Taka's body in a tarp and used the dolly to move it all the way down to the repository. That explains how each of the bodies disappeared. But even Hifumi didn't know what the true killer had in mind for their final act. Their plan all along was to kill Hifumi and get rid of the one person who could betray them. And they did it using an ordinary, everyday hammer from the repository. That should cover everything that happened in this case. And the villain behind it all is... Celeste! Sorry. You lose. Complete. I lost? Oh man, I gotta say, that was... It's probably because I did it before, but Jesus, that was not as bad as I remember it being. I remember being stuck on this for a while. I lost? When was the last time I was forced to utter such words? Uh, I can tell you. Um... Two seconds ago, about two to five seconds ago. They hang heavy around my neck. Like the noose of guilt that you now have? Then you admit it? You're the killer? <laughs> Listen to you, trying to take charge, as if you're my private instructor. I don't want to be. I want to be the nigga to show you you're wrong. I, Celestia Ludenberg. Actually, no. Taiko Yasuhiro is fine. Yo, I'm sorry, this 180, this 180 voice? I had to voice that for three chapters. Three! I had, to, I had to voice this voice for three chapters, damn it! And you just go around and just pull that normal shit out. <laughs> you know how infuriated I was to do that? Taiko? So, you finally accepted it. I'm the kind of person, once I've lost, I don't like things to drag on. Three! Yo, voice like this, I had to put on it.